About 40 people gathered outside the Turkish Embassy in Dublin this evening to commemorate the 32 people killed by the ISIS bombing in Surik earlier this week. A new massacre by ISIS in Suruj district of Urfa, North Kurdistan, Turkey. The ISIS suicide attack carried out against members of the Federation of Socialist Youth Associations before who were going into the town of Kobane in Syrian Kurdistan to support the reconstruction of Kobane. The assembly arrived in Suruj in a convoy of buses and consisted of youth from Istanbul, Ankara, Izmir, Adana and northern Turkey between the ages of 20 and 30. The youth group had developed plans to build a library, construct a park for children as well as a small hospital. Upon arriving in Suruj, the Federation made an official request for the municipality to enter Kobane. Initially the request was denied, but several hours later the request was accepted and permission was granted. The youth group gathered at the Amara Cultural Center for a press conference to announce that they were officially granted permission to cross the border. However, during the press conference, a suicide blast occurred and killing 32 and injuring over 100 youth. The blast came one day after the third year anniversary of the Rojava Revolution on July 19, 2012, where the Kurds established a democratic autonomous administration. Celebrations occurred internationally to honor this anniversary. It is very clear that the ongoing political crisis in Turkey has again played a direct role in this recent terrorist attacks and tragedy. The direct and open support to ISIS in the region from various states has ensured this latest bloody attack has occurred. The Kurdish resistance and fight against ISIS barbarism is for democracy, human rights and entire humanity. To support the Kurds in Rojava and condemn ISIS and its supporters is a moral and political responsibility for the international community. This attack is not just against Rojava revolution, but is also against Rojava supporters, allies and the entire humanity. ISIS crossed the Turkish border freely on a daily basis, but the young people who are carrying toys for children were not permitted by Turkish government to go to Kobane for humanitarian help. Those young people were coming from the different cities and towns of Turkey, and most of them had a bright future as they were all university students and graduates. However, these young people who were full of life and aiming to help anyone, regardless of ethnic origins, religious, as they were believing in solidarity and socialist values, they were ahead of the borders. That's why they were targeted and massacred. The enemy of humanity and its supporters should now remember that the brutality they carried out made us stronger and united. And now we are more stronger and powerful. And we promise our fallen comrades that the message they have for Kobane will be reached to its destination. Since the Syrian civil war started, Turkish government has been supporting all the terrorist organizations and opening its borders to the jihadi groups against Bashar Assad. Yet not just opening its borders, also supplying weapons and arms to this barbarian and rapist groups and all the necessary training ground also provided within the Turkish border in Achakale and Hatay and Rehanli. Since the Rojava revolution, the Turkish government became the real ally to ISIS as Turkey were against the Kurdish gains in the region. Last year when Kobane was under attack by rapist ISIS gangs, then Turkish Prime Minister, now President of Turkey, Erdogan, was praising ISIS to take over Kobane and have his Friday prayer in Kobane. Erdogan openly admitted that he would rather see Kobane in the hands of ISIS rather than Kurdish ones. Erdogan even did not let US planes attacking ISIS positions in Kobane and around Kobane use a Turkish airbase at Incirlik, conveniently located 100 miles from Kobane. Neither did he take action to prevent weapons and ammunition from crossing the border to reach ISIS gangs. Federation of Socialist Youth Association members made public months before that they were getting ready to go and take part for the reconstruction of Kobane. The question has to be asked the Turkish government is, one, police comprehensively searching use as they were heading to Amara Cultural Center. The police checkpoints was 200 meters away from Amara and police could have set up the checkpoint nearest the cultural center. If they did this, the massacre would not have happened. Two, how did the ISIS suicide bomber enter the cultural center in an environment where the police searched everyone and even their notebooks, cameras, etc. Three, how did the Turkish intelligence that surveys everywhere in Suruç, included in the Mursi Pinar border gate, manage not to see the ISIS bomber? Four, how is it possible for the police not to identify the ISIS member despite the fact that Amara Cultural Center is located next to the police station? Five, 
Why did the police attack the people who are carrying injured people from the attack to the hospital? Do the police want wounded people to die as well? Six, how many ISIS cells exist in and around Suraj? So basically the state of aware is this and turning blind, eye on it, blind eyes on it. Seven, there are witness statements that there were two attackers, male and female. The injured woman is currently under police custody. Who is the woman? Why the officials are failing to make a statement on this? Actually, many people, especially the HDP and some independent journalists, foresaw this type of attacks after the liberation of Tel Abyad from the ISIS gangs by the People's Protection Unit, YPG. Defeated ISIS terrorists in Tel Abyad, they made their way to Akhtar Kale, was smiling to cameras alongside the Turkish soldiers. As it was documented and proved that ISIS headquarters is based in Akhtar Kale. Tal Abyad was a heavy defeat for ISIS and its ally AKP government because all the logistics were arranged through the border gate here in Tal Abyad and AKP government once again publicly declared that they would not stand by this and watch Kurds gaining powers and ISIS failing. The brutal massacre in Suraj targeted the democratic and free life model developed in Rojava. Um, and that yeah, concludes the state's thing. Silence. If anyone has a watch or a phone that I can time that on, please. We have the technology. Okay, minute silence in memory of the uh, the victims and martyrs. Uh, dear comrades, thank you for coming here for um, solid solidarity to the to the Kurdish uh, people and all the socialist groups in in Turkey. Who recently um, we lost about 31 comrades, and this number likely to rise as we have around 100 people in hospitals at the moment, and nine of them are really really uh, uh, seriously injured. So I'm going to just read their names and where. Yeah, what they were doing and where they were studying, just briefly. Thank you for listening. So the one of them was called Murat Yurtgirl, 23 years old, from the university, was studying um, art and culture. He, it was his fourth year, also was doing some humanitarian works in, in Istanbul as well. The second comrade was called Ferdane Kulic, and also she lost her son, Nartan Kulic, as well. She was the, she was one of the um, H, member of the HDP party based in, in Bursa, along her uh, her son. Both of them died, so unfortunately, um, it's, it's very, very sad to see um, such a, such a lady and, and her son, so and her father was um, was the candidate in the HDP general election in the 7th of June so the third one is Hatice Ezgi 
Hatice Ezgi was 20 years old from she was studying in Mimar Sinan University in Istanbul. She was studying art. Suleyman Aksu was also 23 years old. He was an English teacher in in Yüksekova Hakkari province. Ali Can Vural was 18 years old from Samsun. 19 years old, he was studying political science and international relation in Samsung. Alper Sapan was 20 years old from Giresun. He was studying in Anatolian University, studying philosophy. Koray Chapolo, he was from Trabzon, 30 years old. Okan Pirinç was 18 years old, just graduated from the um, secondary, from the college, so he was uh, planning to go to university, so... Ur Özkan, he was the construction worker, 26 years old, from Cizre, Kurdistan. Yunus Emre Shen, he was 20 year, 22 years old, from Van was studying in Ankara University, studying science again. So, I'm very upset, guys. Just sorry about the, a bit. Okay. Mujahid Arol, he was a musician, 19 years old, from Mush, also studying in Haran University in Urfa. He was studying music. Medali Baruc, he was from Mush, also studying in Marmara University in Istanbul, studying political science. Chadash Aydın was 27 years old, from Dersim, also studying in Anatolian University in Eskişehir, public science. Cemil Yildiz was 65 years old, from Sinop, and he was the HDP candidate for Sinop in 7th of June election. Duygu Tuna, she was the member of the HDP in Istanbul. Kasim Deprem, he was 28 years old from Urfa, Suruç, where the bomb exploded. He was studying in Urfa, Haran University, studying science here. Aydan Ezgi Sanje, she was from Samsung, she was studying journalism. Cebrail Günebakan, no age, sorry. Bishra Mete, she was studying journalism in Istanbul University. Ismet Şeker, H not mentioned, his son also died in Kobani against ISIS gangs. He lost his life in YPG site and his father died in Suruç explosion three days ago. Emrullah Akhamur was from Mardin, study, was studying in Mersin University History Department. Nazlı Akyurek was 22 years old, studying in Kojali University, she was studying law. If the law exists, so, yeah. they knew the law doesn't exist, I mean in Turkey is such a country, but she was still studying law. Nazagül Boyraz, she was 55 years old, she was the member of the Republican People Party in Istanbul. Good to you. Erdal Bozkurt. He was 27 years old from Agra. That's all, 31 comrades. So as I said, we have 31 comrades lost their life and we have another 100 in hospitals and nine of them are really, really serious and we can, we can get the news anytime. Sorry. 
think you just need to turn it down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And we think here in Ireland and in Turkey, in anywhere in the world, the solidarity we, we receive from, the, from everyone in any country, we are grateful for that. And, 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 and we think all, all this blood, the Turkish government, not Turkish people, we have nothing against them. And we believe the Turkish, um, Turkish government recently, the AKP party, and especially the Turkish president Pro er er Erdogan has his hand on this blood and he should stop to uh, support ISIS or other jihadi organization because of their foreign policy. Their foreign policy they, they've been following for for last four, five years for, for Middle East is, is failing and is, will not achieve any success. So will bring more casualties. Today, a bomb exploded in Suruj. It will happen in Istanbul tomorrow. It will happen in London. It will happen in Dublin. It will happen everywhere. If they, if they, if they continue with the support to support the terrorism. So they should close their borders. And we need international community to put more pressure on Turkish state to not allow these jihadists and rapists and murderers and uh, behaviors and just uh, close their borders. I mean, last within two years, around five, six thousand people crossed the Turkish border from the Istanbul airport and freely going to the to the Suruj and Syria and killing people. And because the Turkish being against Assad regime doesn't mean to just use anything, just topple Bashar Assad and and have a your have your hand on on, on the on the criminal act is um, against uh, these innocent people so we need more solidarity for the for the oppressed people especially in rojava in kobani so they need our help so and i hope we will we will get stronger and stronger and the the our comrades the thing they wanted to achieve and go over there and help other vulnerable people and i hope we will get that message there and our our enemies Will will just watch us, and we, they will be defeated by by the things we will be achieving. Thank you for being here. Thank you for for all your support.